What's up, school fans? Back with me, Rocky Padilla, and today we're gonna catch up with Lurf, Dewa United star Jamar Johnson. Jamar, thanks for uh, joining me today for this interview. How you doing, man? Man, I'm doing great, man. What's up, Rock? How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. <laughs> Thank yeah, you, though. We're... You know, I know you're pretty busy now with the IBL playoff, but first of all, how's that body, man? Playing three days in a row. <laughs> man, yo, I'm telling you, man, like, honestly, I switched to a plant-based diet, so I think that's really helping my recovery, man. And mm -hmm. I'm feeling pretty good right now, man. I'm looking forward to playing tomorrow, and we actually play the evening game, so mm -hmm. more time to rest for us, man. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, you guys won. Uh, you went through a a, a hard-fought battle against Bima Prakasa Jogja, but how proud are you, though? We can say that Lurf's still a young team, but how proud are you with your team, you know, fighting through all the adversities in the first round of the playoff? Man, man, I'm so proud of our guys, man. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, Bima, they beat us three times in a row. It, okay. Yeah, during the true. regular season, so, like, when we when we approached the game, too, it was like, man, what are we going to do? Like, we had to figure out a solution, so You see guys step up, our young players, Leo, Dio, Putu, uh, even Rex Neal. Um, so many of our rookies and young players, uh, Nico, just playing well, Moses. Like, it, it, it was inspiring, man. It inspired me. And mm. I think it led to like, the shot that, that gave mm. us extra life and gave us a chance to, you know, advance, man, and keep it going. Yeah, we got to keep, we got to save that question for later on for the shot. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> But we got to talk about, what do you think you guys did better? Uh, from uh, game one. I know you guys didn't really play well in game one, but what do you guys do better in game two and game three? Um, game two, we switched to a full court zone press mm -hmm. and we played zone all game. So we noticed that they, they, they kind of struggled against our zone. So that was a tactical right. strategy thing that we did. And we lived or died because the first game, Indra and Nuke, both, they hit a, a combined 13 or 14 threes. Yeah. <laughs> at a, they, they shot 50%. And game two, uh, it was a nuke didn't play. Yeah. And then Indra was kind of cold, but uh, I did play well. So I think uh, we kind of had their number with how they were getting their open shots. And then game three, we just was, it was able to put it all together, man. It was like one of those games where we kind of knew what we had to do. And we just approached it as if mm -hmm. we already knew like exactly what, you know, what strategy was going to work. We had to make mm. shots. We had to make plays, but it was uh, it was something that we kind of expected that could happen based on how we played in game two. So, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It worked out, man. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was so fun though, to watch uh, us as a fan also enjoyed that series uh, really well because, man, <laughs> well, let's talk about that shot now. <laughs> At the end... Uh, You kind of threw it up, but yeah, let, 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 I'm gonna let you take us through that shot, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, like shots like that are mm -hmm. you can't practice that kind of pressure. Mm -hmm. Um, you can't practice that kind of like moment. All I could do at that time was get the ball up in time, and mm -hmm. the, basically, the way the defense played us, they switched everything. So when I came off, the, when I caught the ball and came back, it basically just collapsed on me. So mm -hmm. I Is an angle uh, Lorv has when I shot, when I actually, I really got a good foul through on the shot. Uh -huh. I just didn't have no arc on it because they were underneath me. <laughs> so the ball literally was like a line drive, Sean yeah. Marion, like Sean Marion line drive. Yeah. But it, 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 it went dead. It just went, it was, it was just dead straight. So I was, yeah. after you could see in one angle, I shot it and yeah, I was yeah. like looking like, yo, like it's yeah. kind of going straight. And then it was just, it hit. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. I can't believe it. It yeah. was just an outpouring of so much emotion, bro. Like, yeah. it was, man, it was an amazing feeling, man. Amazing yeah. feeling. <laughs> How many rims did you see? <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw one rim, but after that, I, I was blurry after that. It was red. I was just like, <laughs> Man, it was a blur after that, man. I know. I, after that shot, I know people talk about, you know, you say something to the bench and then... He, the incident with the with Fabry, your old teammate but yeah. we all know it's yeah. still all love between you and Fabry. Yeah. i really respect yeah. it i saw it on the ideal instagram you say my bad after game yeah. uh, after game three and then you guys you yeah. know share a moment also but can you start yeah. about that battle though between you and Fabry, the whole series Um, I think it was a battle between me and their whole team. And I think like, even from the time we played them the first game, like the first game they face guarded me and just bumped me everywhere I went. 
Second game, they literally like I, the first three games against them. First two games, I only scored mm-hmm. a total of ten points or fourteen, oh. twelve points. Yeah, I really couldn't get into my rhythm, man. I mean, they were being so physical. So, like when I hit that shot, um, I I kind of scr- scream like it's not over yet. That's what I screamed. Uh, but yeah. it was directly. I was like moving in that direction, and like and my my attention was like on the first person I could see, and the coach was there. So I kind of was just like it's not over yet. Like I was just screaming it. But then I guess February wanted to defend the coach and he walked over to me like and kind of gave me a little, so then me and him got into it. But yeah, it's never no love lost. But I think the that emotion was just all the frustration of being bumped and grabbed and and pushed like for four games, man. <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, no, I know. I, 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 really... I, I, I wasn't trying to like come out on a, on a, on a negative way. I wasn't trying to be uh, malicious in any way. It was just like the outpouring of holding it back and staying professional and staying focus on the game when I'm dealing with like enormous amounts of physicality like I'm just like bro <laughs> I had to let it out somehow but no it was all level me and February man I, I actually DM uh coach uh coach David today DM them uh, actually last night and said I was uh, apologize for what happened never didn't want to you know cause any maliciousness I, I seen how the game went and it came out like that but thank you for having making me better that's what I told him like that level of physicality was kind of like how Detroit did Jordan, it's real for like they just was bumped. everywhere he went. It was an elbow, shiver, mm. chicken wing here, <laughs> like you know what I mean. Right. Like it was, but it made him tougher though. You know what I mean? And I, 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 I text Coach uh, Singleton today and told him thank you and I apologize as well, man. It's, it's never nothing personal, man. It's just part of the game. Man, that is really nice of you though to do that. I'm very happy to hear that as well, but. You are the best player on the floor. You got to expect that <laughs> though, right? From them. <laughs> Man, I mean, I, I try my best to just like play the game. You know what I'm saying? But when it comes down to that extra stuff, like, I mean, yeah. a lot of things, a lot of things, it was just a bit like, come on, it's, like, it's not basketball <laughs> anymore. You know, like, yeah. I'm not going to say any names or maybe instances, but people were just like doing some extra stuff, man. I'm like, bro, like. <laughs> I had to tell the one kid, I'm like, yo, you do it again, it's going to be a problem. Because like, then you're taking it personal. You're not playing yeah. basketball anymore, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, but you're right, though. It comes with the territory. Yeah. But uh, it was something I had to adjust to, man, because that was that was a battle for sure. Yeah. In game in game three, uh, Kevin Moses, as you guys, as you know, you know, he's been playing really well the whole season. Can you just talk about a little bit, you know, playing alongside Kevin this whole season? Man, nah, Moses is playing yeah. phenomenal basketball, man. He's playing like uh, yesterday, he was hitting shots, and I'm like, look, because like we're playing a five out system, so it's kind of just ISO one on one. He's in triple threat, sizing up, hitting face up jumpers, getting to the rim. You know, that little slow step he got, yeah, yeah, yeah. Face. <laughs> he always does man, that. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like, yo, like, I'm, I'm really, really uh, proud and uh, happy for how he's playing, man, because I know it takes. A level of confidence to do that on the on the stages that we're on and uh, to perform the way he's performing, man. I'm I'm nothing but happy for him. I, I tell him all the time, like, I mean, not all the time. Actually, I don't even have to say much to him because I just let him do his thing. But at times, I just be like, yo, like, go get one, but go get go, go get a bucket, yeah. bro. Like, cause so at times we need just a bucket or be aggressive right here or, or hold it back right here. You know what I mean? But man, playing alongside of him makes the game easy, man. I feel like. At any given time, he can go create his own shot for himself or for others. And that's that's mm-hmm. the game. It's about a bucket eventually. So now playing on side of him this year has been great, man. I'm very, very proud of him and his accomplishments and how he's playing, man, for sure. Yeah, man. He just won the most improved player this season. And I see yeah. a lot of, you know, improvement from him as well, especially from his shooting, though, you know. But mm. I think he's a leader also for this team. What do you think about that? He's our captain. I mean, yeah. our management, our coaches named him the captain, and I think he has a big uh, voice and a really big influence on the players. Uh, he can uh, he can uh, grab their attention and grab their 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 focus in a different way than I can. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, and he's uh, he's he's a, he's like one of their peers as well. He's not like mm-hmm. a senior player, so like they kind of have that that brother like you know mm-hmm. friend vibe so like um nah man i definitely uh respect his leadership i respect how he approaches the game uh you see you know how much work he puts in he's in the gym yeah. every single day you know what i'm saying so i, I don't even have to like I, there's nothing i have to do about him all yeah. i try to do is try to find you know find ways to enhance what he's already doing and 
and uh and uh play alongside of it man because it's a blessing to have that kind of mm-hmm. talent next to you man for sure mm-hmm. And talking about leadership, you are playing for a very young coach, <laughs> Coach Badu. But I think I've mm. seen you, uh, you know, you're very enjoying yourself playing for Love Devil United. But can you just talk about a little bit, you know, playing for Coach Badu? Yeah, no, nah, Coach Badu, man, uh, mm. I posted like early in the season, like, because I didn't mm. really play for him when I was with Laura last year. I was a mm-hmm. practice player watching from the side. I didn't really get a taste of how I felt, but I can always see, like, he just gave the players uh the freedom to play their game like he uh he always says to us like uh jangan uh tira baban tira tekan yeah yeah just just mine i just mine i feel like he he if, if you really can you know get into get out of your own head and get out of the old trauma and and things that you went through in the past with old coaches and really embrace his message I feel like he allows you to be uh, the best you can possibly be. Mm. Like he's not, he's not trying to hold you back. He's not trying to restrict you or sabotage you in any kind of way with how he plays, uh, what he tells you you can and can't do. So overall, man, uh, Coach Purdue has been a blessing. Like even this last mm. game three, I'm bringing the ball up. I, I wrote in our group, I'm like, yo, when I get the ball on the rebound, let me bring the ball up, guys, so I, you guys can just run in transition because mm. we can, I can push the break too. Mm. Coach gave me the, the ball handling assignments and allowed me to handle the ball and get us into our offense, which uh, relieves that defensive pressure now because now they can't just bump me and you know, <laughs> be up on me <laughs> yeah. the whole time I'm on the court. So, nah, Coach Badu, man, is really uh, a basketball mind, a, a very, very intelligent coach. And I really, I really respect how he approaches the game. And he's always open to feedback. He's not the kind of coach that mm. and, like pushes the system on you. He's Always asking us like, "Hey, mm-hmm. anybody have it?" Are, are that on? That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, and then and then everyone would be quiet, and somebody would be like, yeah. Yeah. then someone would speak up. But yeah, yeah, he's always open to feedback. He's always open to what's best for the team, and I really respect how he approaches the game and and his players for sure. Yeah, it must be nice though to have a coach like that. And of course, he's probably busy right now, you know, <laughs> trying to uh, make his strategy play against one of the best teams in Indonesia right now, Plita Jaya. So, upcoming matchup, man, this is going to be a tough battle also for you guys. But, you know, what do you think will be key though for you guys to, you know, maybe win against them? I think our, I think the key for us is to uh, to play confident, man. Because uh, our young players, um, we have we have phases where we play overly. We have, we have phases where we play really really good, and we have phases where we play really really bad. Mm. The difference in those games is just our overall confidence and understanding level and trusting each other. So um, playing Peter Jaya and the games that we lost against them kind of had that. It kind of has the same feel of how we play BPG. Okay. Like basically, we couldn't win against them. We didn't know how to win against them, and we we approached the game like we don't know how we we don't know what we're gonna do against them. You know, mm-hmm. we had no answer. But based on how we performed in this last uh, in a, in the first round, I think our players' morale and confidence is high, and I think that that's the key because mm-hmm. we all can. At the end of the day, it's just about a bucket, and it's just about getting stops. So if we can play. Um, our system is not complex you know, where that's confusing. So it's just about getting the buck and getting stops. And I feel like if we our team, if our team is confident and our team feels, you know, you know, uh, yeah, eager to just want to just play their game, play our game. I think that's the, I think that's the key for us, like our overall team chemistry and team confidence. Yeah, I think you guys could surprise a lot of people in this upcoming upcoming matchup because I, actually you are you guys are the underdog. You guys have no pressure coming into this series. They have the bigger pressure yeah. because you they have right. to perform, you know. But uh, just talk about well, you're gonna match up against a lot of national team players. You know how excited yeah. are you about that? Mm, I'm not necessarily excited about that. <laughs> but, uh, I'm definitely because but but that's just my boys, man. You know, Cross mm-hmm. and Agassi. Mm-hmm. And, Caton, yeah. Tino, uh, even Vincent too. Like a lot of those guys, just you know. I mean, we got that. We got that bond. We got that brotherhood. Mm-hmm. We got that respect for each other. Um, so uh, I'm looking forward to just you know winning. I mean, focusing on our team and playing well. I mean, but seeing those guys across the court are always. It's like I know them. You know what I'm saying? It's just like I have a different relationship with them. Like I seen them when I seen Caton CLS days. You know what I mean? I seen Pras and uh, Agassi like. Years and years and years and years, like so many times already. So, 
like these guys are like like you know uh friends but uh right now this is about basketball man mm -hmm. it's about getting to this next round so let's we'll see how it goes <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. by the way, no love. I mean, it's no love lost against them at all. But we gotta get this done, man. And yeah, they're gonna want, and they're, and they're gonna want to, and they're gonna want to play as well. So, <laughs> by the way, congratulations on yeah. winning the MVP awards. I almost forgot about that. But can you just talk uh, about? You know, you've been, you came a long way. But um, just want to talk about um, how happy are you to be back in the IBL again, playing the IBL again? Let's see. Nah, man. Uh, the whole last year, I was talking with Pat Junas and Pat Eric Erlanga, mm -hmm. trying to uh, just figure out a way for naturalized players to play. You know, mm -hmm. that was that was the discrepancy. Like, as naturalized players, we were counted as foreign players, and you already played for the national team, so it seemed kind of contradictory mm -hmm. to not be counted as a local in a local league when we already represented the country. So, uh, for allowing us to play this year. I'm so thankful for the IBL to allow us to play. And I'm so just like overjoyed that I'm healthy. <laughs> for sure. Like this be this being able to get back on the court, man. Like I actually like the game one, man, I just sat there and, and it just hit me, man. Cause I was like I was listening to music before the game. I was stretching. And I just I just I just felt like this overwhelming sense of gratitude, man. And I just cried, man, in front of everybody. Wow. I don't know wow. if they saw me or not, but I just I just felt like this this burden like like god really like helped me back on the court man to make my dream come true and now i'm in the playoffs after two years of just waiting and not really knowing what was going to happen it was just man it was just like an overwhelming uh flow of thankfulness because i know god is on my side and helping me uh know this, with this whole situation so Um, I'm nothing but humbled and nothing but thankful for the league, for my mm. team. Prior to this moment, man, I'm just, I'm overjoyed, man. I'm just thankful, man. And every day uh, I make sure I write it down or I say it or I express it mm. somehow through uh, my own words or how I treat others. But even with the situation, like, I don't want no bad blood, man. I don't want no, you know, hate, no animosity. I'm trying my best to just appreciate what's, what's, on, what's in my hands right now, man. And, It's it's a blessing, man. I, I feel so thankful to be here, man. And to win, like, I didn't know I was like this. I didn't know they were counting my stats as a local. So this year, it was a bombarding of all these awards. I had no idea. Like, <laughs> I was close to a thousand rebounds and a yeah. thousand points oh, yeah. and all these other things that I'm getting awarded with. I'm just like, yo, <laughs> it's yeah. a blessing, man. There's nothing but a blessing, man. So yeah. Indonesia knows that. I show my best to represent that and appreciate and show that gratitude. Um, In every situation I'm in here, man. Uh, but yeah, nah, it's, it's a blessing, man, for sure. We are we are blessed to to have you as a naturalist player, and of course, we are blessed to to see you back on the court. You know, playing the IBL. But we all know what you went through in the last two years. You know, with the Achilles with the Achilles injury, and then we talked when you were in Turkey. You know, you tried to play and find a team in Turkey, and yeah, you can just talk about that tough process and then until you get back 100% again and play in the IBL. Yeah, yeah man, uh, for sure, man. Uh, it's been an amazing, amazing journey, man. I, I, I learned that uh, what goes around comes around, man. Mm -hmm. I learned that, like, you know, whatever you put into the, whatever you put out there, whatever you believe is going to come back eventually. And, like, even being with Lord since last, what, the last two years, like, I was a practice player. I kind of like restarted like my career again. So that as a practice yeah. player, was helping the team, was putting in the work to get my calf stronger. And then uh, the COVID happened. So then mm -hmm. I'm hearing all these rumors about a new naturalized player being naturalized. And I'm hearing, uh, actually Lester's already here. So a lot mm -hmm. of a lot of things was, is happening. And it was just like, it's had me just feeling kind of off, man, because I just was like, I put in so much work and dedicated my heart to Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And to not really know for certain, like, what my future was looking like was always a tough place to be in. So that's why I tried out Turkey. And actually, I tried out Turkey out because, like, I, I felt like it was like, going to be a, a step up, you know, from mm -hmm. where I was playing here in Indonesia. 
-hmm. but I, I was talking to a friend of mine and uh, I realized like, yo, everybody has their own basketball journey, overseas players. And you're lucky if you get sustainability. You see now with COVID, a lot of people are out of jobs. A lot of people don't have the ability to just be stationed in one country, be naturalized for one thing, and to be able to be playing in many different ways in that country, like as an overseas player, you know, uh, as, a, as a professional overseas player. So for me, man, to be just here and, and how things transpired, you know, how Pat Junas and even the citizens of Indonesia Mm -hmm. pulled for us to play this year in the IBO. It's amazing, man. <laughs> like, Pat Junas first, I mean, the, the rules were like, we couldn't play. Yeah. Then they shifted the rules and said we could play. And <laughs> then, you know, B-Boy cried out on Instagram and told everybody about his situation. It just put, like, a spotlight on how much, like, guys like me and him, like, love basketball. Like, how we really give up our lives. And this mm -hmm. is the what we truly makes us, like, feel alive. It's our passion for and our love for this game. And I'm so thankful to be here and to be big to, to be in Indonesia and to be playing basketball here and to have had the success and the and the journey I've had here, man. It hasn't been easy, but like it's it's unique in its own way. You know what I mean? Like not many players are naturalized in other countries. Like not many other players have the abilities to do the things that I have that I have to have the ability to do as a professional overseas player. So I'm just I'm just over, overly thankful, bro. Like, um, learn so much about myself, and I've, I've been meditating, man. I've been, <laughs> I've been, I changed my diet, bro. I did everything I could possibly do to like be in the best possible mindset and the best possible physical uh, shape that I can be in uh, to maximize the opportunity that I have right now. Um, but it was just something that I really feel. Uh, grew me as a man, you know, I'm be 33 this year, man. I started this journey when I was uh, 26, man. I mean, well, as, as a professional basketball player, like the last five years, it's playing professional basketball here in Indo. And I mean, I, 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 I never, I can't ask for anything more, man. To be with Laura right now, and uh, now Laura of Daywide United, like this be, to see the transition of, you know, the Indonesia Basketball League, to see the growth, of our national team, uh, the growth of our the basketball culture here, man. Like I'm just, I'm just overly thankful, bro. Like, cause I know that all the hardships and the challenges I went through. Like literally, I had to like uh, clear my DMs. I'll clear my DMs for all the people that mentioned me from the shot. And every yeah. every time I got down to like 80, I'll refresh it. It'll be like 90 plus 99 again. <laughs> I had to do that. Like, I swear, bro. I've been doing it since like two days from now, and I'm trying to show love. To all the people who've been like shouting me out, and just, I'm just like, yo, like, what is going on, man? But it's 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 a blessing, man. And and I see that the fans appreciate uh, what I gave to the game here, and I'm just so thankful to be here, man. So overall, uh, the Achilles was a blessing, man. The Achilles re re uh, reaffirm my love for this country, reaffirm my love to want to be and build and. Uh, to want to commit to playing here mm -hmm. like and not only that the the now indonesia has you know in some ways opened their arms and said yeah we, we actually want you to now like all the awards and stuff that came this year I, and they, they were counting my points as a local since i've been playing here they've been counting my rebounds they've been yeah. uh, taking taking account of all the things that i've been contributing to the culture already so i just Man, <laughs> at the end of the day, bro, man, I, I'm Pajunas, uh, the directors of the IBL, the Prabasi, everyone who's allowed me to continue my basketball career. I'm overly thankful, uh, so grateful to be here, man. And I'm going to do my best to uh, not only maximize myself on the court, but also off the court. You know, you guys, I do my JJ Elite, I do my coaching, I do my training. Um, mm -hmm. That's something that came from the Achilles injury because I already would coach, but it, it made me focus on how I can get back to the game even more, you know. So this man, this is a lifetime commitment for me, man. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm locked in, man. <laughs> and I'm excited to see, it's, it's continue seeing the growth and the, the progress of Indonesian basketball, man, for sure. And not only uh, was the journey for uh, my Achilles, like a mental thing, it was a physical thing. But during that time, they pot Eric Erlanga, man, just came out of nowhere. And Lore just came and came to the rescue, man. Like they saved my life. Like they saved my basketball career, man. And 
I just want to show like mad appreciation and mad love to Pi Eric Carlanga, man. And and the whole Dewa United organization, Lord of Dewa United organization, because they trusted in this process before I could even uh, put up a point for their team. Like I was still in recovery, didn't even have a chance to play. And they they put their trust in me, man. So I'm glad that right now we're in the semis and right now we're making some uh, prestige for, for our club. And I'm thankful that they, uh, you know, I'm thankful to be here, man. So shout out to Pat Eric, shout out to Pat Mike, shout out to Edison, shout out to Jays for real. <laughs> shout out to all the whole management team. Shout out to everybody who's, you know, part of Lord of Daylight United, man, because yeah, without them, yeah, I wouldn't even be here right now. So yeah, man, it's only right though, you know, for all the net rest player to play in our league because man, you gave you sacrificed a lot, you put in the work you know so it's only right i think i'm very happy when i heard the news too about you b boy mm -hmm. and maybe in the future lester could play in the ibl as well you know yeah. you never know but we are so happy so yeah. hopefully you guys can continue help our basketball uh young players our young players uh to grow as well so our national team gonna be better also in the future so we're we mm -hmm. really i'm gonna you know what's the english for wakil kan eh? i'm gonna <laughs> on behalf, on behalf of the Indonesian basketball fans, uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna say thank you for you, mm -hmm. B boy. You know, you guys did a lot for our country, man. You know, gave you gave us medals. You even you play in the Asian Games. I actually haven't yeah. asked you about that. You know, how was that experience yeah. playing the Asian Games? And you guys finished eighth actually in the Asian yeah. Games. Yeah, you know? yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, this that stage is uh, reserved. Uh, it's a special stage to be on and mm -hmm. to be uh on that stage with the guys that i played with with based on the journey that i had man it was uh it was challenging because you know we were a bit undersized i i was a center you know what i mean so we kind of didn't we, it was a small ball concept but it wasn't a small ball like strategy you know what i'm saying like we didn't really i wasn't really using all of my abilities uh because i was doing so much defensively so much <laughs> In a rebounding, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I know. But at, at, at the same time, overall, the experience was amazing, bro. Like, to see the fans and to see, like, the, the, be on the court and against ex-NBA, you know, Asian players, you know, like, to, to see Yao Ming and all, yeah. the, all, all the countries, that like, come together. I didn't know half the countries were Asian countries into the Asian <laughs> games. Like, it was in the, uh, the mess and whatever, seeing all the people walk around. I'm like, yo, they're, they're Asian too? Like, what? Like, it was just like, it was just, it just opened my eyes and broadened my horizons, man, about, you know, uh, my, my uh, appreciation for Asian culture in general, man. I really respect uh, and, and I really appreciate um, and I resonate with the Asian culture. Like, I'm more of a laid back personality. If, if, I mean, and I, I feel like this culture and how things are done here sometimes, which is a bit kind of a big transition from the U.S. Yeah, it's still it's still just uh, still it's kind of in my lane man. still kind of like how I like to move and how I like to operate. So the Asian Games, man, was an amazing yeah. experience and to hit shots and to make plays in the, in the, on that stage. Uh, and to actually yeah, make the top eight in the game against Thailand, where I, you, you took the picture, man. Yeah, I was I dropped, dropped 28 and 16, and I yeah. was like, I was hitting shots that I knew, like it was just like, like it was like those feel good shots. You know what I mean? Like you know, like like you're feeling good, you're feeling confident. Like I was like, man, that was just like, yeah. man, blessing, man. So the Asian Games is dope, man. I will hope I can have another chance to represent Indonesia on a big stage like that again. Amen to that, Jamar. I really appreciate you, man, for telling your story. This is one of the most fun interview I had, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you uh, taking the time man, and uh, reaching out. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. And good luck against Plita Jaya. Uh, I'll be watching. Uh, hopefully, you guys can uh, put up a great fight against them. And of course, stay healthy. And, you yeah. know, and good luck. And thank you so much for, uh, for joining me. And thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And everybody, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, everybody can support Jamar and Love Deva United in the semifinals of IBL Playoff. And, yeah, don't forget to comment on the comment section below. And I really appreciate you guys for watching. And I will see you guys on the next video. Peace out.